All right, can everyone see the page? Yes. 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 What you see? First. First letter. All right. Okay. All right. So first, just what you want to do is lay down the groundwork by filing your UCC one with the state UCC office, which is the Secretary of State. But you also want to add to it the rest of the documentation. So please write this down. Text it to yourself or whatever you need to do. It's not just the UCC1 financing statement. It's the UCC addendum. It's the UCC affidavit. It's the copyright trademark trade name. It's the second it's the security agreement, private agreement, whole harmless indemnity clause, fidelity bond, bond for discharge, negative overtment, revoking power of attorney, well granting power of attorney in this case. Granting power of attorney. Never bond set off. Negotiable chargeback. Negotiable bill of exchange. Option of form 90. Option of form 91. Standard form eight um, 28. And you also want to learn at the state level prison bonds, which is the payment bond, the performance bond, and the bid bond. So the bid bond, the performance bond, and the payment bond, which is 24, 25, 25A. Then you want to learn the forms at the federal level. 273, 274, 275. So this is making the real live person, the creditor, the secure party, and hold it in due course of the corporation fiction, straw man, in all caps, debtor, which is the name in all caps. See how to play the corporate game. Also, copyright your straw man name and record it with the county recorder's office. Bond instruction letter, bond the presentment stamped diagonally in blue ink, accepted and returned as true. Copy you now. This is what you want to do with your birth certi with your birth certificate. That's the bond, and you want it stamped at a forty five degree angle in blue ink. Accept it and return as true copy of power of attorney, which we talked about. Grand power of attorney and a copy of the copyright. Send the original bond stamped originally on bond paper with the four other document is backed by the agency that send the presentment to you. So you want to send it off to the CFO of the corporation, the chief financial officer. And you want to send a copy to the criminal division of the IRS to back up your documentation. You also want to learn the 1099A 1099B, 1099C, 1099K, and the 1099OID. We'll learn these forms as well. You will learn the 1096, S, F, S as in Sam, F as in Frank, 181 form which is race and ethnicity, which correlates with the SS5 form at the IRS, which also 
asks about race and ethnicity. These are the major forms outside of your nationality in order to learn how to operate within commerce. You want to learn land patterns, a low to you title, homestead act, those three. This is essentially everything that you need, what I just told you. So the original bond is the birth certificate. Remember, we told you that last week. It has West Bank Note Company or Midwest Bank Note Company or whatever. It's a bank note company. We even showed you the building of this bank note company, which is connected to the Federal Reserve Bank and the deposit or depository trust company or corporation and its subsidiaries. And you want to send off your documents once they have done. That's your UCC one financing statements and the various documents that goes along with it. And you want to send it to the Secretary of Treasury to activate your money account or what's called your UCC trust account. And that is simply more than, that's simply just being able to discharge debt. Charge and discharge or set off, set or set off, charge and discharge. Learn those terminologies. In fact, who has their Black Law Dictionary? Let's read that right quick. Let's read. Because this all goes back to the House Joint Resolution 192, HJR 192 of June 5th, 1933. Anyone got this? Anyone got it? Let's look up discharge. Let's look up charge. Let's look up set off. Black's Law Dictionary. Someone pull it out. Peace, God. I'm looking up discharge. All right. Thank you. All right, got this charge here. Um, to release, liberate, annul, unburden, disencumber, dismiss, to extinguish an obligation, to terminate employment of a person, uh, release, as from prison, confinement, or military service. And that is for what the word discharge? Yes, discharge. Mm. Read that one more time for everyone, God. Um, to release, liberate, annul, unburden, disencumber, dismiss, to extinguish an obligation, terminate employment of a person, release, as from prison, confinement, or military service. Mm-hmm. Because all of us heard of of the military in terms of discharge. They tell us that a person who's in the military, that they are discharged based on their particular actions or behavior. They're discharged. Where else do we hear the word discharge that? Anybody knows? Hospital. Oh, there you go. And what happens at the hospital? 
Because remember, they do charge you. <laughs> So think about it. Why would hospitals do that? Is it because that's where they put forth the first bond act, which is the birth certificate? It is, it's established from the hospital, right? So they have the process of charging and discharging at the hospital. Think about it. Military, your U.S. property. Oh, that means it must be predicated upon the birth certificate. So they have in the military, charging and discharging. When you get into the military, you are being charged. Anyone went to the military in here? You heard those terminologies, of course, especially the discharging yeah, process. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Discharge. I got discharged papers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you got your papers, right? So oh, so yeah. for charging and discharging, you got to have your papers. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. In the hospital, you, you're getting charged and discharged, you got to have your papers. <laughs> Y'all beginning to overstand this? Oh, yes, brother. So where else do you get charged at and discharged? It's in the courtroom. Do you understand the charges being brought up against you? <laughs> you heard that before, ain't you? Oh, yeah. Brother Lanier? Uh, um, read, read that one more. Read that paragraph one more time for everybody to get it. Okay. Uh, to release, liberate, annul, unburden, disencumber, dismiss. To extinguish. Dismiss. What? Hold on. Where else do we hear the term "dismiss" at? In court. In court. Oh, there we go again. So court. here you are. Case dismissed. So, so, so you hear the word "charging" in court. And you hear the word dismiss, which correlates specifically with the word discharge in court. So it's not dismiss, it's discharging. So you do you understand the charges being all being brought up against you? And then if you win the case, it was discharged. Oh, in this case, dismiss, as you just heard from the definition. Dismiss and discharge is simultaneously. One and the same. They are synonymous. Dr. Lee. Yes. Found the definition for charge if you wanted that. Yeah, let's read it. Okay. So, Black's Law, Edition 4, charge. To impose a burden duty obligation or lien to create a claim against property to claim to demand to accuse to instruct a jury on matters of law to impose a tax duty or trust expatriate horn bc was 293 f 455 as a case reference, in commercial transactions, to bill or to invoice George M. Jones Company versus Canada National R.Y. Company. Um, well, God, I should have stopped you at the word lean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let's read that one more time. Let's, let's see that word lean up in there. To impose a burden, duty, obligation, or lien. Mm. So a charge is a lien. A charge is a lien, y'all. What? Mm. Yes, sir. A charge is a lien. Wow. Let me need somebody to look up lean right quick. Then we're going to finish with this definition here. 
What's the lean, y'all? Someone look up lean for me right quick. You hear about this lean, y'all? All right, got it for you, Doc. All right. All right, lean. A charge or or security or encumbrance upon property. Uh, upon what? <laughs> property. Did I hear property? I heard the word property. Yep. Oh. Do y'all get it now? See, when you are called United States citizen, you are property. This is why when you go into the military, you are U.S. property. And anyone who's been to the military know that. They are U.S. property. Matter of fact, it's on their goddamn sack, on their green sack bag that they put all the little items in. It's right there. It's yeah, U.S. Right. property right at they the damn bottom of it. U.S. U. Dot S. Dot. <laughs> hey, U. Dot hey, S. Dot print, property. Property. Right. Mmm. Yep. So a lean. Oh, bag. Or a duffel bag, right. they already call it. Yeah. Right, duffel bag. Right, that's what I'm talking about. This big-ass green duffel bag. You put all your little <laughs> items in it right at the bottom. Right at the bottom, it says U dot S dot property. Sure is. So do say it. So, so, so this is why military soldiers can only go into particular areas because they are U.S. property. They can't go outside of those areas. If they do, they can get fined or get jail-timed. Huh. In other words, they, they can get leaned upon. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. All right. Y'all yeah. learning something today. They can get learning something today. They can get charged or discharged. Right. And then end up getting discharged because of your behavior, because you got leaned upon because <laughs> right. you're U.S. property. Right. right. Cut, cut you off limits, off limits. And everything that I'm telling you is predicated upon the birth certificate, which you never placed the lean upon so that you can't get leaned upon. <laughs> <laughs> But yet you have Negroes, you have Negroes posing as Moors telling you not to authenticate your birth certificate. Yep, sure do. You have them telling you not to become or do an affidavit of ownership, of title and ownership of the birth certificate. You have yep. them telling you not to do an executor or executrix letter yep. to become head of the office of your estate, which is the name in all caps, which is the straw man, which is the dummy, which is predicated upon the birth certificate, which is a bond, which we just heard, which is a lien, which can be charged or discharged at their convenience, not at yours. Everybody overstanding? Oh, it's man, right there. Brother. It, it, it's right there in your own Black Law Dictionary. That's why I'm telling y'all to pull it out, so y'all can read it. I've already read this shit. <laughs> I came to my conclusion a long time ago. Huh. The game that is being played on us. And you have Negroes telling us that, oh, you're a U.S. citizen. I am? Well, I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. Right, I'm United. Uh, only, uh, only thing. Right, uh, um, United States citizen? No, United Washington National. <laughs> that's only that's only United that I'm dealing with, that I want to deal with. And at least in superiority position, that is. In a superior position. 
So this is the reason why you have to do your nationality, real simple. Nationality is the order of the day. Nationality is the call of the day. This is something in which that we have to do. This is why everything we do starts off with nationality. Because in there you have a live claim birth form, which is not predicated upon their upon their docket by the doc. Sitting by the dock of the bay. Oh, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> the dock of the bay. I'm the bay. And I don't need no damn dock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doctor? <laughs> right. I can show it. I'm my own doctor. And so I'm the bay. <laughs> so just look at the things. I'm giving you keys, throwing things out there in order to make you think about what is actually taking place and what is going on when it comes to commerce, that they've played this Wizard of Oz game with us a little bit too long here. And there's no need for playing games. But this is what they've done. You see, and they have us caught up into just physical games. But when this is actually a paper game, which is dealing with physical, no less, but the pen is more mightier than the sword, as they say. And this is the game that they have us really tied up in. And we can't overstand that, it seems. Many of us say, oh, we're going to pick up the gun and don't do shit. You're not ready for that. But what you are ready for is that damn pen to a paper, pen to pad. <laughs> and, taking, and taking your shit back. That's what you can be, that's what you can be used to. That's what you that's what you can do. Okay? That's what you can do. Right? We have our head in the lion's mouth and we have to pull it out slowly, otherwise the lion will clamp down on your neck. And the whole science is protect your neck. Wu Tang clan niggas. <laughs> protect your neck. And so you use the asset protection to protect your neck. And it's called assets because it's to protect your ass at the same time as your neck. <laughs> okay? That's the science. That's the science of protecting your neck and ass. I'll, I'll... <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> neck and ass. Neck and ass. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right so this is the reason why you want to do nationality first then you do the commerce activate your UCC trust account so that you can begin to start discharging some of these charges in which that is being brought up against you such as prison charges remember that's what it's called right prison charges isn't that what it's called? So if there's prison charges, that means these charges can be discharged. And I realized that a long time ago, 20 years ago. And this is how I've been getting people out of jail, well, excuse me, out of prison for the last 15 years. Well, everybody else is talking, saying they did this and that, trying to get Lamborghinis and cars. I'm not worried about none of that. I can get all these shoes. For what? I'm trying to get my people liberated. I'm going straight to their system. Right. I'm going straight to them and sit, presenting this information and getting people, our brothers, out of 
prison. These are the keys. I can tell you the state in which that it works the best in, in which that I've done it, was Georgia and Alabama. I got four out of jail in Alabama. One in Missouri. Two in Georgia. And they was in it for charges up to 40 years. But if you know the process, which I'm telling you the process actually, you can discharge the charges. You can discharge the prison charges. Because remember, that's what they call them. They call them prison charges. And you heard the definition of a discharge. Dismiss. Right? Right. That's what we heard. So the Barion, read that read that um definition one more time for me. All right, give me a minute. I was flipping through looking up the uh, other words too. Okay. Right. You wanna get back to them in a second too. I just I just got to make sure everybody understands what is taking place here. Because they say that I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yet the definition is right in your face. In your face. The All right, I got yeah. it here. Okay. All right. Uh, discharge. Discharge. To, to release, liberate. To no. release. Oh, oh. Wait, wait, wait. That's the word. That's the word I wanted. <laughs> there it is. The first word liberate. of discharge is the word release. The first, the first definition, y'all, the first part of the definition, the first word of the definition is release. Wow. Wow. Discharge to release. Continue on, God. To release, liberate, annul, unburden, disencumber, dismiss. Mm hmm so the last word is dismiss. First word is to release. So when you have your case dismissed in court, you are able to do what? Be released. Right? So that means that the charges that was brought up against you, you did what? You discharged them. And you discharged them either by setting off, or discharging process, or you beat them at their own game and transform an abnormality court, maritime court, into a common law court, and you challenge their jurisdiction over subject matter and persona, which are over person. And in their court system, you have to have the burden of proof upon the subject matter, and the person, persona. If you do not have both, then the case is supposed to be dismissed, discharged. <clears throat> That's just what it is. However, if the court can't prove both, and it just has subject matter, or if it just has persona, person, then the case is supposed to be dismissed once again because the court has to have both. So when you go in there and state that you're not a U.S. citizen and that the 14th Amendment was never fully, fully uh, ratified and that according to the Dress Scott case decision that you're not a U.S. citizen, 
They don't have subject matter and they don't have person or persona. I just gave you the two cases to win any court case. As long as you have a nationality as a moor. A mortal. Which means a mortal car. America. So when you say that you are a moor or a mortal, then you're saying that you are an American. You're not saying that you come from Spain. Yeah, you're not saying that you come from Spain or Africa. When we saying that we're Moors, this is why Novadrali told you twice, you are Moorish American. But the word Moor is a Moor, a Moru, already. So it's an oxymoron to have to say Moorish American, which is nothing but saying American American twice. This is why in this class we don't normally use the term Moorish American because we realize that the word more is a more, which is short for a moru, which is a moruka, a miracle. So, Brother Joff, read for me the definition once again. Finish that up, please. Dr. Ali, I came out of it looking for another word. Believe. Oh, okay. It's on my phone. I take me a minute. Are you looking for? Um, the word we were looking for was lean. Was that was charge? Right, that was charge. Remember, lean was a charge. So that means when you come into court, you are lean. Immediately, you are charged. That's why it says, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? you understand the lien in which that is being attached to your name? And people be standing like, mm-hmm, I understand it. No, you don't. Because you charge and discharge credit cards. You want to charge it? You want to charge it? You ready to charge? That's a credit card. You ready to charge? You want to charge? You want to charge? So you should be able to discharge credit cards. Everyone should have 800 credit and more. Because actually this uh, credit goes up higher than that, than 800. Good credit is between 700 and 750. That's that's good credit. It'd be like, good, God, yeah, that's that's pretty good. But you can discharge the charges from credit cards. And that's why I'm telling you the importance of learning a 1098, excuse me, a 1099A and a 1099B so that you can discharge charges from credit. That abbreviment in which that they give you in which that tears off the bottom of that information you can write at a 45 degree angle the payment once you send in your documentation. Remember, when you send in to the Secretary of Treasury, the Secretary of Treasury, all your documentation that I just made mention of, your UCC ones, financial statement, UCC addendum, copyright trademark trade name, private agreement, whole harmless demi clause, so forth and so on, and, and the list goes on and on and on. And you send those documents off along with a civil bond certificate. Make sure you have 20 to 22 pieces of silver or more. You take a picture of it and attach it to your silver bond, and you open and activate your UCC trust account, or what's called your money account, your discharge account, as I call it. And that's what it is, your discharge account. And now you have the ability in 30 days to discharge any of your debts, which is predicated upon the red mail stamp and which that you put upon of that vanilla envelope with your documentation that I just made mention of 
and that number becomes your account number to discharge debt. So on your 1099A, 1099B forms, you will have that number along with your UCC trust number, which is without the dashes, which is your Social Security number, as well as also the Federal Reserve Bank in which that those funds are attached to, as well as also your state file number on your birth certificate and your bond number in red, which is on your birth certificate. Those five examples that I just gave are the one or the numbers in which that you need upon your documentations of when you're discharging any item or process. Dr. Lim, I have charge if you want it. Yes, let's hear the charge. And remember, lien is a charge now, so now we're going to two charge. Let's hear it. To impose a burden, duty, okay. obligation. Oh. Uh-oh. So a charge, do you understand the charge is being brought up against you? In other words, do you understand the burden that I'm placing on your ass? Do you understand that you are guilty? <laughs> Continue on. A burden. A are you standing under these charges? Right. <laughs> are you guilty? Well, go ahead. Go, go ahead, the guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, obligation or lien to create a claim against property. Hmm. They go to word property again. To claim or demand to accuse. Mm. To accuse. To accuse. Not prove. Not not prove, but to accuse. <laughs> An accusation. <laughs> to instruct in a charge. Or matters of law. Mm. To instruct a jury on matters of law. Mm. To impose a tax. To impose a tax. So a charge is a tax, yo. But everybody's so happy you around here paying their taxes. They're charging it up. <laughs> and according to the UCC, the ones who pay taxes are citizens created by the Congress. And exactly. States. And right, that- but in... Mm-hmm. Okay, so I reach uh, matters of law to impose a tax duty or trust to patriate horn, DC wash, that's a case reference, in commercial transactions to bill or invoice. Okay, so, so it is commercial. A commercial transaction, y'all. Everything that he just read is a commercial transaction. Remember, did you hear the word trust in there too? So a charge is a trust. A charge is established by a trust. Well, I no longer trust them. Now what? <laughs> What you do now that you no longer trust them? Now what? Think about it, y'all. Y'all got the answers in the four definitions that we just read. You would discharge and lean them. There you go. Thank you. You said it. That's it. We would discharge. So you can charge by a trust and you can discharge by a trust. Of 
Because remember, a charge is a lien. Do you want to be leaned upon when you have unalienable rights? According to the Constitution? Which that means that their whole system violates the Constitution itself? Because when they charge you, they're saying that you are leanable as compared to being inalienable or unalienable, as I call it. So you have unalienable rights. But they do away with your rights, and you are now lean upon or charged. Hence the reason why they ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you? So, what's the importance of nationality? Nationality gives you a way out that you're no longer lean upon, and it gives you back your unalienable rights. That's the science of nationality. But because you are still in the matrix in some, sh in some sense or fashion, now you have to go in and revoke power of attorney from all those who is posing as trustees of your trust. And what's higher than the trust? Anybody knows? Can I tell you? A state? I do. Oh, my God. Someone is studying. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Your estate is higher than your trust. But yet you have more telling you don't come back in charge of your estate. Well, how the hell are you going to do a trust if you don't have an estate? <laughs> That's what they call the places that you live. They call those states. But those states came from an estate. <laughs> Whose estate did it come from? Ancestors. It, the washer tool. You got it. Exactly. Because Louisiana was never purchased. It is still called washer tool proper or washer tool terror, as in territory. Or as in planet Earth, it's called Terra. T E R R A, Terra. Where they're raising terror on the planet. T E R R O R. <laughs> so, you do your executor or executrice estate letter. And you come back in position of your office of the estate. And that estate is higher than the courts. You are truly above the law. And you gather up everything that you have and you put it in the trust as part of the estate. And you appoint your own trustees. And no one can play trustee such as a judge. And that's what he's doing in court. He's playing trustee. Because you haven't come back into control of your estate. And you have not gathered all your items and things into, an, into a trust as part of the estate. Because normally, the only time they deal with estates is when a Negro dies. And they call it the Negro estate. <laughs> well, for example, my grandfather, his name was Airy High. And it was called the Harry, um, the um, Airy High estate.
so they don't deal with you in life, even though they made your name in all caps. They just simply said that you're simply this mortus, that you're a dummy, artificial person, homeo stromo, stromo is homo, straw man. Civilis Mortus. But they don't tell you that that name in all caps is also an estate. Question, Dr. Abby. Yes. So just like how we were talking about the Washita Terra region, so what about our immediate you know, families who, you know, they they passed and stuff? Well, remember, according to the Treaty of Camp Homes, anyone who claims to be a Cherokee, Choctaw, Creek, which is Muskogee, Seneca, Kwakpa, Comanche, Wichita, which is Washita, are all part of the treaty. And we are one people because it says the Wichita tribes and nations and associates. So that means everyone that we just named, the Cherokee, the Creek, which is Muskogee, the Seneca, the Kwakpa, so forth and so on, are all one family. We're all part of the same people and heritage. Therefore, when we say Washita, we talk about all of us, regardless of the ancestral connection or tribal connection. It combines us and makes us into one. This is why this is what was so important about the name Washita is because it signify all of us together, historically, as compared to just individually. Oh, you are the Cherokee, or oh, you are the Creek, or oh, you are the, the Washita is all of us coming together under one banner. Empire. Right. Old empire. Right. And that's the key. Oh, Arlene? Yes. On uh, my father's side, uh, they say I'm big Cherokee. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Chuck Chuck from okay. Mississippi. There you yeah. go, Chuck Chuck Cherokee. Cherokee. No, okay, Chuck Chuck and Cherokee. Well, okay, well, what that's both saying? sides so of the family. What? Both, both sides of the family so, is under the same banner, Washita. She, she, she said, the, uh, cousin, she said, no, nah, we Cherokee. Uh, they, tell mm-hmm. us, they told us we were Cherokee. I said, what? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got, I got deep roots in, uh, in indigenous America, too. So mm-hmm. uh, I guess my teeth not shovel teeth for nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to mute myself out. So, it says, send the original bond, stamp the original on the bond paper with the four other documents back to the agency that send the presentment to you. So, this is why we tell you to get several copies of the birth certificate from the Secretary of State. The long form one, the same one in which that you authenticate, you want to get it from the Secretary of State in the state that you was conceived in. What's the difference between the long form and the short form birth certificate? Um, The short one is from the county recorder's office. The long one is from the Secretary of State. Oh, okay. So it's just from where you get it from. But in order to get your birth certificate authenticated, you get it from the um, Secretary of State. Okay. 
you order them. They're fifteen dollars or more nowadays. It was fifteen dollars, but um, you order several copies of them. You get it, um, authenticated at the Secretary of State authentication process, or or um, department. Then you send it from the Secretary of State to the United States Secretary to um to his or her office and get it authenticated there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Send copies of the bond with the four other documents to everyone you are CCing to regular mail to everyone other than the county sheriff to whom you send certified return receipt requested. So. This is the same thing. Matter of fact, let's pull it down so you can see. This is essentially how it looks. Remember, it's supposed to be in blue nowadays, so let's make it blue because this is back in the days when we used to use the red. We do blue. There it is. All right, so take for value and accept the truth and discharge by bond in exchange for full closure and settlement of the account. You are hereby authorized to use my tax exemption in accordance with House Joint Resolution 192 UCC 3-419 and Public Law 73-10. Charge my private UCC contract trust account adjust the balance to zero. Those are the simple instructions. You see how simple that is, those instructions are? Look at that. Just a paragraph. Prepaid preferred stock priority exempt from levy. In other words, exempt from lien. Uh oh, you can't get lien upon now. You are exempt from liens. You get it? The account, as you see here, is the numbers without the dashes on your Social Security card, all right? UCC1 trust account is the numbers and letters, the letters and numbers in which that is on your red registered mail tab. All right? Then you have the living principal, sentient authorized representative. So your indigenous appellation written in up and lower case lettering. And uh, if you still know how to write in cursive, that is. Date, 4-26-2009, or in other words, the date. And then, of course, the bond number, which is on the back of your Social Security card. The number that's on the back of your Social Security card in which that is attached to the Federal Reserve Bank. Remember, we went over last week the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. And the 13th one is Havana, Cuba, with the treasurer, which is on the $2 bill, which is actually on the $1 bill, $2 bill, is on the, is on the various bills that we have in our pockets. But he's the one on the left-hand side, or she is the one on the left-hand side. Okay. There's another area in which that you can put, as you see here, invoice, and you see the amount. So that means the invoice would be the number in which that's attached to the name, which is on that form, which, of course, is your um, previous name or your ex-relation name. Or if you're dealing with them and they're doing it in your um, indigenous appellation name, that's where you put invoice. And then, of course, the amount of it, and then as you see there, by, which is your indigenous appellation.
You can also add the state file number or the bond number to this document here. This is why I was telling you earlier that all your documentation, all your information would be on here. The back of Social Security card, the front of Social Security card without the dashes. Okay. Any questions on, on, on what we just went over here? I don't have any. Okay. Look up House Joint Resolution 192 in the Black Law Dictionary. It should be in there. Right. All right. This is um, I call him Doctor um Gene Keating, cause he definitely was a doctor. He was on this information here. He had brothers who was lawyers and judges. All right. So Gene Keating, I used to talk to him on the phone quite a bit. He's passed on now, but this is it here. He said, "I want to start out by saying." that to win in court, you have to know what's going on in court. What goes on in the courtroom goes back to the Edward the First. It's called Statue Merchant. And what it is, is a bond of merchants or bond of record. The statues themselves are the bond. So this is why they're talking about bonds. If you have a bond, or if you don't have a bond, because they're claiming that you violated a statute. Yet there are no such thing as statute laws, technically. What's the book on that? And what do is that they duplicate the statutes that they charge you under with what they call a recognized bond. Well, what's recognized? You, you know what a recognized bond is? I know what a recognized bond is. It's called your birth certificate. Everyone recognized that. <laughs> and people sign the rec recognized bond without reading what the bonds say. Well, that's because it's predicated upon the birth certificate. That's the most recognized bond there is. But even now, you have people saying that is birth certificate is not a bond. Then what the hell is this red? What the hell is these red numbers here? Which states that is a bond. <laughs> I brought this to Joe's attention when he signed his his bond, and what it say is is that you agree to pay back the debt when you go into a court on the criminal charge. It's civil, not criminal. There's a book called. The Jurisdiction and Practice of Law of Admiralty by John Hall is based on clerk praxis. The clerk praxis was a clerk to the court of register of the court arches under the king's bench. The court of arches 
is a court of probate. And he's the one that wrote this book. This book was never intended for public viewing. We're going to try to reprint this book so that everyone can have a copy of it to read it. If you want to understand how admiralty work, this is the book you need to read. And reason being, read the case. O'Rearan versus Clark. And it talks about clerk praxis. And there they use it in vice admiralty court in the colonies during the American Revolution. Question, Dr. Avery. Yeah. And what year was that uh, that the American Revolution was? That was 1775, Sorry. wasn't it? Okay. Remember uh, Paul Revere? The Red Coats are coming. The Red Coats are coming. What they're doing is all about bonds. When you go into the courtroom after you're arrested, they use two sets of bonds. What do they um, do when you're arrested? They fill out a bid bond. The United States court uses 273, 274, and 275. That is a bid bond is 273, performance bond is 274, and a um, payment bond is 275, y'all. SF means standard form. Standard form 273, standard form 274, two, and standard form 275. This is the United States District Court, in other words, federal court. There's another set of bonds, and they are all um, and they're all put up out um, put out by GSA, which is the General Service Administration. I'm just talking off the top of my head because I had all of this stuff memorized. GSA Form 24 is the bid bond. Everyone should have a copy of the bid bond. The performance bond is SF25. The payment bond is SF25A and put out by the General Service Administration, which is abbreviated GSA. The GSA is under the comp controller of currency, which is under the GAO, which is the General Accounting Office. Okay, you have two sets of bonds, two um, SFs, 274, 275, and 275A, all right, which actually what he means is 25, 25, um, 24, 25, and 25A. And at the federal level, you have 273, 274, and 275. Okay? So, this is what's going on, y'all. All right, everybody overstand that? Yes, I do. Understand also. All right. Okay, so what is these bonds doing? Well, let's look at it. What's going on in the courtroom is that they're suing you for a debt collection. This is why they have to lien you, charge you. What is it? Is is an action of assumption. The word presume comes from the word assumptant or to assume. Remember, I make an ass out of you. You make an ass out of yourself and me. What means I agree or I presume to do at an assumption, which means I agree to a collection of a debt. If you look at these bonds, every one of these bonds, the bid bond, performance bond, and payment bond, all have a penal sum attached to it. A penal sum. The reason for the penal sum is that if you go into default, if you don't pay the debt, you go into default judgment. That is what is going on in the courtroom. That is why all the guys are sitting in prison wondering what's going on. If you go in there and argue jurisdiction, and if you don't know what you're doing, Jack Smith is exactly correct when he say 
um, is saying about the honor and dishonor. If you go in and argue jurisdiction or refuse to answer questions, in other words, if you plead the fifth to the judge or to the court addressing you, they will find you in contempt of the court, and they will put you in jail. And if you read Clerk Plaxis, that's all they talk about is contempt. When they used to go back in Edward the First, if you owed a debt, because remember, they've done with debt prisons at this time, they would send a sheriff out with a warrant to arrest you. Well, you know, they still do that. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. John Jackson did not come to court today, and therefore we will send out a warrant for his arrest. Three times, just like or Mason do at the temple door. Not three times. This is all civil. This is not criminal. It's just a smoke, smoke screen to cover up what they're doing. Merchantile civil law and what they use to do when they arrest people with a warrant and brought the person into the court and makes them sign a bond to release until the civil suit. It's exactly the same civil suit in clerk's practice. And some manuscripts or transcripts, excuse me, made of some of my thoughts, and I'm um, going to write it on the board so that everyone know how to spell it. Um, this is how you spell clerk praxis, Latin for practice. If you look up practice, practice, it means practice. This is the only book that I have ever seen that I have um, seen um, about every admiralty book in existence that is actually praxis book, and it goes into everything that Jack teaches. It teaches about letter rogatories. It talks about the collection of debt. What they do if, um, is to arrest you. They hold you. Basically, they hold you until the suit has been completed, and when they get default judgment on you because of fault, failure to pay the debt, then put you in prison. Anyone who has been in jail or prison that knows me knows that I'm not wrong. Attorneys or there to cover up the smoke screen. What attorneys do, because no one um, is going on, um, knows what's going on, they lead you into dishonor and default judgment. And then the court puts you in prison because they sell your default judgment. What do they sell it to? Well, believe it or not, the United States District Court buys all of these state court judgments. Anyone ever seen how they say that uh, the state dropped the charges, but it was picked up by the, by the feds? Anybody heard that before? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's in court. Yeah, 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 you heard that before. Because the United States District Court buys all of the damn state court judgments. <laughs> The judge, the judge tell you that when you standing up in front, or if you're going mm -hmm. a special appearance, the judge tell you that it's mm -hmm. up, but you know it could still be picked up. It could still be picked up. Exactly. How? Oh, because they playing double jeopardy on your ass. Oh, well, that was in the state level. This is now in the federal. This is in federal court now, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so you get on the engine search. <laughs> all about money, boy. I tell you. It's all about money. That's, that's all it's about, Brother L. That's it. <laughs> tell me, Chief. That's it, Chief. Uh, uh. Don't want to hit nothing else. So after you get to the United States Court, go to the 11th Circuit Court of the United States, Circuit 1 through Circuit 11. Click on Circuit 7, and they will take you into the various courts, bankruptcy court, district court, etc. Click on to the North Illinois District Court, and they will tell you, uh, take you to the clerk's office. And there's a box there that scrolls down, and you'll see administrative offices. 
when you see financial department, it would talk about the Criminal Justice Act and the optional bonds. And this is all spelled out there, not just trying to hide it. I don't know what no one has found out this going on before, but go and listen to the list of sureties. Now, why don't you suppose that they have a list of sureties in the federal um, district court? Why is there a list of sureties in the federal district court? When you get into the list of sureties, it would be fms.treasure.gov. That is the Department of Treasury. Okay. When you get into the Department of Treasury, you will see the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see admit reinsurance or reassure. Okay. So underneath there would be a list of surety. Then under the word forms, from there you would see 300 reinsurance companies. They're all insurance companies. I downloaded the whole thing and I have a complete list. I also have a list of surety companies. There's two sets of companies, a list of surety and reinsurance companies. Under 750 of the Department of Treasury, they have to be certified so that they can buy up these bonds. Prison bonds, y'all, is a, is, a, is a heavy market. Michael Jordan made $300 million off these bonds. Guess how he became a billionaire? It wasn't just off of selling high underwears. And them damn Jordan sneakers... These are the people buying the bonds, these bonds when they're in default judgment. And they cannot and they can't buy these bonds unless they are certified by the Secretary of Treasury. Next click onto the word forms and it would take you to the Miller Act reinsurance. And it will list three kinds of bonds. They do not um use a bid bond in the district court. This is why I gave you form twenty four. All of these forms come out of the GSA, the General Service Administration, Form 24, 25, 25A, and 273, 274, 275. These 273, 274, 275 bid um, bond forms, the 273 is the reinsurance with the United States. The 274 is the Miller Act of Reinsurance Performance Bond. And 275 is your payment bond your Miller Act reinsurance payment bond. Okay. What are they doing with these bonds? They have regulation governing these bonds. There are 2,000 regulations governing these bonds. We're going to make these available. Is fifty dollars for the disc. The disc has two thousand regulations of CDs for anyone who wants this. If you go into these regulations with these, uh, um, of telling you this, it is buying up commercial items. These are the words commercial items and two point zero one on these regulations. These regulations are divided into fifty parts. They're eleven twenty six hundred. Uh, 1,126 pages in Volume 1 and 823 pages in Volume 2 and they're on this disc in which that they would tell you that in 2.01 define commercial items a non-personal property. What is non-personal property? Any property that is not real estate is means immovable real um, estate is not movable. Go into your Uniform Commercial Code and look up the word movable and immovable. All right?
Now, what is that? Any property that is not real estate, it means movable, immovable. Real estate is not movable. If you go into it, and I'll read it to you so that you don't think I'm making this stuff up. Commercial items or commercial paper. I recommend everyone that is the eighth edition of the Black Star Dictionary. I doubt if anyone in the room has got one. This thing is really good. Basically, what it is is commercial paper. Negotiable instrument. That's what your birth certificate is. It's a negotiable instrument. That's why I have a negotiable bill of exchange. Negotiable um, um, chargeback. And negotiable. Anything that you put your signature on is a negotiable instrument. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, which is the lax uh, merchantorium. It's mercantile civil law, and the reason they use lex merchantorium in the courtroom is because everyone of you or merchants or law of merchants or law is anyone who holds themselves out, um, out to be an expert because you are commercial paper. Because you are commercial paper on a day-to-day schedule. You are considered to be an expert and it's, it's why that they are not telling you what is going on in the courtroom because you are presumed to know this because you hold yourself out to be a um, hold yourself out to be an expert because you use commercial paper all the time. Every time you put a signature on a piece of paper you are creating a negotiable instrument. Right, remember that. Some are non negotiable and others are negotiable. Anytime you endorse something, you're acting as a accommodation party or an accommodation maker under title um three dash four nineteen. An accommodation party is anyone who loans their signature to another party. Read UCC 319, 3-419, and tell you what accommodation maker is and right, accommodation party is. When you loan your signature to them, they can't rewrite your signature on your document they want, and that's why, and this is what they're doing. Doug, is that what you mean? Um, when we write checks, they can lift our signature yep. off, off of it? Yes, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm getting ready to say. If you actually look at Matter of fact, let me see if I can find an example of it because I've shown it to people before. Yeah, actually, I took my phone and magnified that line after you said it, and you know, and you seen it? Yeah, it, it's in a it's a, it's in some kind of it was in some kind of cryptic format though. It's it's in a cryptic format, huh? <laughs>
Now, everyone's seen the check before, right? This is how it normally looks, right? Can everyone see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Can everyone see the screen? Yes. All right. The signature line on your check is not actually a line. It is microprint reading authorized signature repeatedly. Can y'all see it? Yeah. That's the line. So when you're looking at this, paid to the order of, all right, you come down, dollars, come down memo but then when you get right here on next to MP this line actually is not a line it is authorized signature authorized representative in this case authorized is the word on which that is used As you see here, that's what's going on. This is the play play they got on us. So this phenomenon happens worldwide. The reason for this concern was is known as common law versus statute law. MP stands for microprint. If you are the financial officer of a large corporation and it's your job to sign the checks, there's no problem. You know what you're doing. You know what you aren't um, the corporation. You know that you aren't the corporation and that is just your job to sign the check. It's a authorized signature in big letters so that you can see the person who is signing and administrating the uh, account. On the check of a company or corporation, authorized signature is large enough to see. It is only on personal checks that you have to use a magnifying glass. So in the case of your own checking account, you are not supposed to recognize that it is exactly um, is the exact same process going on. It is because of the fact that the state wants you to be the administrator of your account because of the state of mind it owns you. But in order to activate your um, account in a myriad of ways, it wants to, it needs your signature. It wants the sign of your nature, your natural living self, your aliveness. It needs your consent. It is also why your name on the check and indeed uh, any statute law documents such as driver's license, bank applications, tax forms, correspondence with government agents are made always in uh, written in capital letters. When you write your name in capital letters, you are identifying yourself as the legal person who has agreed to something not contained in common law. It is a willing contract, but yet they never told you that it was in fine print. And you should know exactly what it is that you're doing whenever you are required to write your name in all cap letters or sign your name on 
type of text rather than a simple line. This is a great deal of information available on this subject. I highly recommend you research common law and how it applies to your individual country or residence. Okay. Hey, doggy. I got two types of checks in front of me. One is from an actual some, a refund from a corporation, and beneath it, it does say say authorized signature. Yep. Yep. And on the personal check, it doesn't. It's just that micro print that you that you stated. Right. So, not lying. <laughs> it verifies itself, doesn't it? Yep. So this is key. Read UCC 3-419 and it will tell you what an accommodation maker is and what an accommodation party is. When you loan your signature to them, they can rewrite your signature on any document they want. And that's what they're doing. Okay, I'm telling you, this this is what Dr. this is what Dr. Gene Keaton, Professor Gene Keaton told you. This is what is going on. And what the federal court is doing, they are buying up these court state court default judgments, and they are called criminal cases. But these are called criminal cases, but they're actually a state court default judgments because remember at the end of it they, they call them judgments these are court case judgments but you're actually civil cases and call them criminal to cover it up what they're doing if you read clerk praxis and find that what they're calling criminal is all civil they just call it criminal to rough up your uh, rough up your you know your shit if you don't pay the debt, you go to prison, bottom line. I know. I've been there. I told you I, I wanted the C-U-S-I-P, QCIP number, which is Committee on the Uniform System Identification Process. The QCIP number is in the DTC, Depository Trust Clearing Company, on 55 Water Street, New York City, New York. One zero zero four one. The DTC is the Depository Truth Company or Corporation. It is also called the CFGFCC and the DTCC, Depository Trust Clearance Corporation, and the MCFF, um, F M F C C, excuse me, and the NSCC, Mutual Sec um, Securities Clearing Com Corporation, and the SCCC. Government Service Clearance Corporation. All right. It says National Security Trust Comp Corporation. One trillion dollars a day goes through the DTC. The QCIP is a trademark of the Standards and Poor which is located on the bottom floor of the Depository Trust Company at 55 Water Street. QCIP has what is called the CINS, which is the QCIP International Numbering System. For domestic, they have a six-digit numbering system. And when they go international, when it is CINS, comes in and the ISID, International Security Identification Division, is called ISIN Plus. Right for domestic, they have a six-digit numbering system, and then they go international when their CINS comes in and the IID, International Security Identification Division, is called ICID Plus, and they have a global um, work -necking, um, networking, excuse me, system that includes Payne Weber, 
which has 10,000 corporations in it. And they are the major stockholder in CCS, excuse me, CCA, which is the Correction Corporation of America. And they are in Nashville, Tennessee. All right? Everyone should have this list. And what they've done is privatize the system. Everything, even real estate, Fannie Mae, all of HUD, or all your, this is international. Everybody is feeding off of the prison system. Let me say that again. Everybody's feeding off the prison system. All of the major corporations are feeding off the prison system. Yes, Walmart, et cetera, Target. Have you heard of REIT, which is Real Estate Investment Trust, or PCN, which means Prison Trust? What about all of the real estate? They own all of the real estate because they own the bonds of them. You have to redeem your bond. So they um, didn't choose your account. The Lehman Brothers, who was part of the um, bankers on the Federal Reserve Bank, yeah. Man, that is deep, man. Yeah. And this is what they're doing. They know how they use them. Uh, know how they using them, man. Mm-hmm. Man. Ooh. And now this you know why. The criminal empire. Yeah, and now you know why we make up 65% of the goddamn prison system. Wow. And when you go to wow. court, you see 98% of us in there. Sure do. The Lehman Brothers banking cartel just gave $6 million to the New York who had a deficit and need to read it on page 15 and lay it out. They didn't call it a prison facility. They call it a credit facility. Those prisoners mm. are credit for them, as they are the creditors. You feel the rich off of the prison system. What they make in the prisons? They make cars in prison. Cars. <laughs> they make license plates in clothes. prison. License they make plates. clothes in prison. Exactly. So the Lehman Brothers are the underwriters for the prison system. And who are the Lehman Brothers? They sit on the Federal Reserve Bank. <laughs> Federal Reserve Bank. The designers. Yeah. So see, they're controlling the the prison system for the Reserve Bank, they're controlling the money system. Wow. So here's what's going on. A contractor comes in, uh, any corporation who comes in, and what they do is they tend to a bid bond to the United States District Court and then they buy up these court judgments and anytime you issue a bid bond there has to be a reinsurer they even have reinsurance treaties international treaties if you read the Constitution treaties are the supreme law of the land so they can get a reinsurance company to come in and act as surety for the bid bond and then they uh, then they um, bring in the performance bond and all of these bonds, bid bond, payment bond, performance bonds, or surety bonds, and any time you issue a bid bond, it has to be a surety. What is the surety? It guarantees and reinsurance the bid bond by issuing a performance bond. That's what these performance bonds are. Then they get a underwriter, and then they uh, would be either an investment broker or investment banker. They come in and underwrite the performance bond, which is reinsurance which is reinsuring the bid bond. What does the underwriter do with the payment bond? The underwriter takes the three bonds and pulls them together known as mutual backed securities or bunch bundle bonds. And when you um pull these MBS they're called bonds, and they're sold to a corporation or company called TVA, which is the Bond Market Association. That is actually a corporation. 
what they do is is after the payment bond is issued to ensure the writing of the performance bond, which is ensured to write uh, ensure the bid bond, they convert the bond to investment sureties. The perform the um, banks do, excuse me, um, and the brokerage houses. And they sell these as investment sureties, and you are funding the whole enchilada because you go into default judgment when you go into court. That's what they're doing. You never paid off the lien. Remember, the charge is a lien, y'all. Remember? However, if you had a nationality, you would be unalienable. Bottom See, they don't want to be unalienable. That's why people in prison <laughs> didn't have a nationality. Yeah. Well, that's why they Negro black and cut it so that they can put the ass in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's why they want you to stay Negro black and cut it, Negroes, <laughs> so they can put your ass in prison. Act up. Yeah. Go on and act up. And they didn't authenticate the birth certificate, so uh, that's the second thing. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's why they fair game. Before you can do anything, you have to know what's going on, and there's regulation C48 CFR, Code of Federal Regulation, Title 48. This is where I'm going all getting all this information from. If you're interested in getting the disc, fifty dollars for the disc, and there's over two thousand pages of regulations in there. Part 12 deals with commercial items and commercial items or negotiable instruments, and they're sending these courts so part 12 deals with commercial items and commercial items or negotiable instruments and these um, selling these court judgments as negotiable instruments as commercial items through these bonds the bid bond the performance bond the payment bonds what is the insurator well, anytime you're dealing with bonds or risk management, and what the reinsurer is doing is ensuring part of the risk of the bond. What they do is give him a portion of the original permit, um, permit, um, premium, premium. Excuse me. This is all insurance. Premium is insurance. The original insurer gives him a part of the premium of the policy of the bid bond in exchange for being a reinsurer or indemnify or act as surety for the prison bond or bid bond, excuse me, what the underwriter comes in and guarantees the resale of the bond based on public as investment sureties. <laughs> so in order to win in court, you have to redeem the bond. I went in and I asked them for the bond and everybody disappeared. Nobody showed up. I went down there and asked them for the bid bond. And I say I want the bid bond back. And asked for the cert for the full settlement and disclosure of the um account. I don't think people were doing it right in court. Everything you just prescribe is called bottom tree. Yes, a petrification. um hypothecation. I have a friend who works in the security in um, exchange and knows how to apothecate these bonds. If your money, then they'll create something going on in the bank with these bonds. They monetize um, the bonds. They take your bond because you are um, into default judgment because you didn't pay the debt and took your bond and made an investment surety um, security out of it.
All right. So let's look at it some more here. They're making a fortune off of you. They take your bond because you go into default judgment because you didn't pay the debt and take your bond and make an investment security out of it. They're making a fortune off of you. This guy called me up and said, I read your treatise and said, you're 100% correct. And I said, who's this? And he said, well, I have my own commodities and security company. He buys these bonds. They go international, and when they go international, they go into the INS, and the INS, they go to the ANA, which is the Annual Numeral Number Association and located in Brussels, Belgium, and they have unlimited capital. How many of you have heard of the euro stream? This is where your pound, yen, sterling, everything about um, came up under the prison system. Everything is being funneled through it. They are feeding off of it. That's what a behind 9-11 so that you can't get to the state legislation to pass more statutes. So that they can get to the um, state legislation to pass more statutes, bond statutes, so that they can arrest people for writing a threatening letter so they can't, so they can control um, and arrest you for terrorist activity, paper terrorists, they call it. ALA, um, ALAX is the think tank behind it, American Legal Exchange Committee. Paul Warwick owns the Carnix Foundation. And what's ALAX? does is promote privatization of prison system. And what they do is go to the National Congress of of the Uniform Commercial Code. Um, all right, so let me see. Boom, 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 boom. So it says here, um, LX does is promote privatization of prison system, and what they do is go to the National Congress of Commissioners, which is made up of 72 judges and lawyers, and 72 judges or lawyers are the ones that draws up the Uniform Commercial Code, which everything is operating under. So here you have more talking about, oh, you don't need to do the UCC, but everything is running under operation of the UCC. Everything is under the lax merchantoria. If you go into the state statutes, and I don't care what code you go into, it would say that the principle of law and the equity or law merchants is the decision in all of the courts. It's all commercial law. Everything is commercial. But, Arlene, they yes. said you're participating in the fraud. Yeah. Right. But, but the thing, the whole, the whole system is a fraud. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, that's that's my point. Exactly. Americans of the whole United States system. I mean, it, it, it's all a fraud. The, the, the government is a fraud. Um, they participate. The brother, 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 brother L. L. What are you talking brother about? Brother L. These, these Negroes. Brother L. These Negroes are participating in the fraud when they go to the damn gas station and get gas. <laughs> exactly. And have to pay tax. And have to pay taxes on the damn gas. Or buy a candy bar. Same thing. You Thank you. Wrong, cause you, so, didn't, cause hey. you didn't buy none of that. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So stop. Stop with the stupidity. <laughs> These goddamn moors out here. These moors out here are damn um delusional. They're delusional. They and this is the nonsense that we keep coming under. Damn this goddamn delusionment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We can't play these, these, these um, damn delusional games any longer. Then get our shit together. That's what we got to do. Get our shit together. All right, but um, I'm going to end it here, y'all. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, I tell you, wash your toy each. Good class, brother. Tell you, Thank you. Yeah, I tell you, wash your toy Dr. Yes, Brother Joe? Yes, Brother Dr. Lee. Yes, sir.
Yes, Chief? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. I was with you to talk about the setting up of the temple and um, getting the necessary paperwork from you. Okay. Okay, I, we, oh. we can talk about it. Um, I'll call you. Okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, peace. 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 Charlie. Peace. Charlie. Cool. Cool. Uh, could, I, could I build with you uh, tomorrow morning about the, the court case in New Jersey? This is uh, Brother Desai. Uh, yeah, that can be tomorrow afternoon, God. Afternoon is better? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you, I'll watch the Okay, I'll tell you, watch the age.